Are we gonna get in trouble today? Not that I want to. Just seems to happen around you, that's all. He seems like a nice boy to me. I'm glad you gave him a shot. Yeah, but I got a good feeling about him, is all. I mean, sure, he's a bit rough around the edges. I bet he just needs somebody to show him a better path. You might surprise yourself. Smells like those old Sundays when we'd unload salt tuna shipments at the cannon. You'll get used to it. Right. Here's the road. Follow it south. Feels like the old bits outside of Edgewater. Use them, use them. Visitor? What an unexpected surprise! Please, come in. Come in. I'm getting real bad fight or flight right now. Watch your step. People ain't this friendly outside city walls. The Edgewater deserters were perfectly nice, and they lived outside the city walls. Well, maybe not Adelaide, but everyone else. That's the spirit. Now come in. Make yourselves comfortable. Excellent. 
You've arrived at just the right time. My wife is putting the finishing touches on dinner. Please, make yourself at home until it's ready. Something ain't right about this. Oh, hello there. You come for... for, uh, dinner? That's nice. We had someone else over uh, a week ago or yesterday. I forget. It just gets hard to remember things. I recall moments, feelings, but the details slip. I felt like that after my dad passed. Walked around in a haze for weeks. I'm sorry you're feeling that way too. Other times it's like there's fog. I... Sorry, have we talked about this before? That's nice of you. I usually feel better after I eat. Mama said dinner's almost ready, huh? What a pleasant surprise. And just when I was beginning to fear we'd seen the last of good company for a spell. Yet the Eternal provides, does it not? The Eternal does not desire that we huddle and hide, crowded in by walls. We all share the spark of the Divine, and we were made to spread it across the stars. Out here, we are free. And even apart from society, the universe provides for us, as your being here proves. Just that your presence here is a gift to us, and one that we don't take for granted. Look at me, prattling on as if this gravy is going to cook itself. Why don't you run along until we are ready for dinner? Oh, hi there. Did you come to bring us more of those rocket candies? That's wonderful. There was this other man who used to bring them. Not anymore, though. He said they were making us sick. Mom and Papa got real mad at him for that. They went to have a talk with him. Afterwards, they said he wasn't coming back again. Mama and Papa said he came from the city. When we got sick one time, he brought those candies to make us well again. And they worked. Now we feel better than ever. Mama says they're a gift from the Eternal. Okay, maybe I'll see you at dinner. We wouldn't want to intrude. Hey, what are you doing in my room? Liar! You're trying to steal the last of my rocket candies, aren't you?
so for sodden asshole. Isn't it enough that the raps eat everyone? Now people are doing it too? I'm gonna be sick. to die so clean. How can we explain this to folks? Everybody with missing family will wonder if... if these people... Stalking, and we're stalking.
showed up, then wrapped it on. It was a void blasted mess. I ran in here and, um, now the door's locked. Little help? It's easier than it sounds, all right? Next time you get chased by raptodons, you let me know the rationality of your decisions. Phew. Thanks, mister. My buddy had a key, but I ain't heard him in a while. He locked me in here and took off. Probably got munched. So look for a dead guy, I guess. Or a rat. Maybe it's in a rat belly. Gross. Sure. Pete's not answering questions. Huxley! I'm an Iconoclast runner. THE Iconoclast runner. Fastest we've got. Ain't a raptodon on this void-forsaken hellhole that can catch me. I'm... Uh, I'm... Phew, sorry. Put me in a tiny room like this and I'm liable to flip. Not keen on tight spaces, you know? Oh, that'd be my people. Graham and Zora and Milton and... I really miss them. You gonna let me out of here? I wanna get back to Amber Heights. Probably. I don't know. When I try to read things, my mind gets to wandering about all the things I could be doing instead. My buddy locked me in here. I told you that. It was for my safekeeping, on account of raptodons wanting to munch on my head. But, I mean, okay, yes, fine. I get myself into sticky situations. It's just part of the life, all right? Sometimes you gotta hide in a trash can so you don't get eaten by monsters. Oh, uh, <laughs> neither was I. Who'd hide in a trash can? Gross. Ah, oh, phew. Thank you so much. It was getting all stuffy in there, and I was getting a mite lightheaded, and I think maybe I was gonna die. Now I'm out here, and I'm headed back to Amber Heights. Still landing yourself in trouble, eh, Hux? Oh, hi, Mioka. Um, you mind giving me an escort back home? I'm... Oh, you're traveling with someone. Never mind. got nothing on me. How's about a heaping helping of appreciation and respect? Can do. Oh, sure, I'm a runner. I'm used to getting all dizzy and... Hey, who's your identical, slightly blurry friend? Thanks a lot, mister.
was it like in Edgewater? I hear you workers were on the clock every available moment. We always got eight hours a day for sleeping. Just not always consecutive. My condolences. I appreciate consistent wages like any other sane person, but that still sounds awful. At least Sanjar gives his folks weekends. Weekends? Hands of the void. I used to drop by the bar in Stellar Bay to knock a few back with the folks who had Saturdays off. Don't know what I'd have done with that much time. I was always behind schedule anyhow. Knowing you, you'd sit and be alone with your thoughts. And you should know, you're getting excellent reviews from across the company. What can I do for you? You weren't supposed to look. I asked you to delete it. I didn't mean for any harm to come to you. This has been my albatross. The great shame of my career. I give MSI everything. My work, my youth, my left kidney, and for years, I was a joke to them. Oh, one of the executives required a transplant. I thought volunteering to donate might improve my prospects. No, I am a company man. In charge of a scrap heap of a city, abandoned by the board and surviving only through the hypocrisy of our trading partners. I hadn't thought of it that way. But perhaps there's something to that. Thank you for that. Or was there something else? Oh, yes. I'm going to be up all night with this. All those blanks waiting to be filled, boxes waiting to be ticked. Try to control yourself, sir. Have you any idea how powerful this is? Corporations have been toppled with less. What a question! Bureaucratic micromanagement is the only way anything gets done in Halcyon, and proper documentation is a key part of that. For our part, a bill of liquidation slash transfer form 52 will protect our holdings on Monarch by temporarily assigning them to a pass-through entity once we drop our bomb on the board. Sort of. Really, we're just going to blackmail them into offering us a seat at the table. But really, whatever gets you excited about the idea, it's definitely a firm middle finger. That's what I like to hear. I have reason to believe that one of the other corporations is operating on Monarch, illegally and in secret. Is it really illegal if the board's the one that makes the rules in the first place? If we can find proof, I can use that as leverage to encourage certain powers that be to accept our Bolt 52 and reinstate us on the board. You really think so? I admit I've been hatching this scheme for quite some time. I just needed someone capable to help me carry it out. If someone is operating here, then Catherine's almost certainly supplying them out of Fallbrook. Perhaps she could be convinced to tell you where they are. That's part of the problem. She has certain ambitions for Stellar Bay. And I fear my asking her would give her the leverage she's been looking for. Don't get yourself worked up, sir. It's perfectly natural to have a healthy fear of her. 
no, she's not fun scary like you. Just scary, scary. But that's why you'll be equipped to handle her. Oh, I imagine you do. But as much as I love your can-do attitude and dangerous gravitas, Catherine handles all of our shipments. So it would be best if you could leave her in one piece. Is that how you people put it? Of course. I didn't mean to make assumptions. Once you, uh, subtly work out where this corporate facility might be, bring back proof of its operation. Maybe some nice letterhead. Or someone working there. That would do it. A foolproof plan if I ever heard one. I'll leave the execution to you. I'd give you a friendlier welcome, but I'm up to my elbows and salt tuna guts. That he's got his load on and I'm stuck covering his shift? That's... Wow. I sure feel like an ass now. He's up. I'm running on a chronic shortage of sleep here. Still... It's good to know what happened to him. And that I ought to start looking for a replacement. Something else on your mind? Good old Stellar Bay. Only place on the planet that don't stink of sulfur. On account of it stinking like fish instead. You reckon the smell ever goes away? Maybe the wind off the sea helps. Come out and play!
Incoming! <laughs> Watch your feet. The sulfur pools don't just stink. They'll take a toe off.
Watch out! South here, off the road and down this slope. We've got a decent trek ahead of us. Miss McDevitt used to say that plants need sulfur to grow, and here there's just tubs of it lying about. Oof, I hear acid baths are all the rage in Byzantium. Anyone fancy a dip? Fallbrook's on the other side of the bridge there if you need a drink. We're only halfway to the mountain, so might consider stopping in. Certainly a town, I think. Fallbrook's great. Anything you want, they've got it. So long as you've got the bits. Thank <laughs> you. 
Christ. You seen Arthur today? Yeah, last time I saw him was uh, stunned. I can't remember. Days. You don't think he got crushed during the bridge? It was his team running that drop. You shopping for pre-owned or new? If you bloody it, you buy it. Store policy. Yeah, and? Do I look like the city planner? I wasn't exactly consulted on the blueprints when Catherine started building out Fallbrook. But now that you mention it, I reckon she had her reasons to hide us. We got smugglers, outlaws, mavericks, and Byzantium socialites flying in and out of Fallbrook all the time. Why openly spin in the board's eye? They're so self-important the way they strut around, preening and flashing their pricey gadgets. Makes for easy marks. Keeps our pockets lined with bits. Town sublight owned and run caters to a variety of clientele. The one you want to avoid pissing off the most is Catherine. Prove bad for her business, and she'll kneecap you without a second thought. I test every product myself to assure maximum customer satisfaction. If you doubt it, I can show you my lower back rash. No rubbernecking. Make a buy or move on. Welcome to the offices of the Greater Halcyon Insurance Group. Halcyon's premier provider of life and disaster-related insurance. I'm obligated to inform you that our coverage does not extend to incidents deemed to result from negligence, criminal activity, or dullness of mind. Some people, but no one in this office, I assure you, might call it stupidity. So, what kind of insurance package can I interest you in? We're running a special on dismemberment policies. Buy one, get one half off. We're not on Monarch. For all practical and tax-related purposes, this office is an official enclave of Byzantium. Legally speaking, corporations are not allowed to operate on Monarch. But financially speaking, there are certain costs to running a business from within Byzantium's walls. So while our official address is in the city, and while our office here is technically an extension of that address, we found it more expedient to conduct our key operations here. So we can... What's the phrase? Pass savings to the consumer, of course. We prefer to think of it as chasing the savings. Turns out that not having to pay kickbacks, fines, and rent in the most expensive city in Halcyon improves our liquidity. Plus, Sublight keeps this place running remarkably well, and they sure drive business our direction. Plenty. 
As my boss likes to say, there's a policy for every situation and an exclusion for every policy. We've ensured unusually expressive eyebrows, outrageous statements, disastrous marriages. Those are mostly for top rungers in Byzantium who have a lot of social and financial capital wrapped up in their marriage contracts. There's one for your beloved eloping with your sibling, your beloved eloping with their sibling, scandalous rumors forcing you apart, the revelation of a secret love child. We try to cover every possible hazard to domestic bliss. That policy is almost exclusively for our corporate clientele. In the unlikely event they make a claim about a product that turns out to be less than accurate, they need some kind of protection against the damage to their sales and reputation. Usually character actors, or corporate execs with menacing stares. One thing's for sure, you won't find better policy protection against sudden lunar implosions anywhere in Halcyon. Folks I never met before are my most favorite kind. So, what's your story? Let me just stop you right there, stranger. My question, it's not one I really want an answer to. Not unless it accompanies some extra bits. Understand? More than you can afford at this time. Your eyes do not deceive you. This bar serves the sweetest fire water in all of Fallbrook. I got some snacks on offer too from time to time. If you're asking if it's Sublight owned, then yes. If you're asking if we give discounts to Sublight employees, then the answer is not only no, but doubly no. Ms. Malin built the bar, the saloon, and the town to boot. If you got business with Sublight, I suggest you follow up with her.